Music videos. Once known as the primary way for us to consume music through the likes of MTV, have now found a rather dominating home on platforms such as TikTok and YouTube. This includes record-breaking view counts for music videos like Despacito, and let's not forget the most impactful music video of all time, Baby Shark. But in all seriousness, music videos and just video content in general are having a much larger impact on the music industry now than they ever have before. TikTok trends alone are creating superstars weekly and having an impact on the charts that we've never seen before. Not to mention both Apple Music and Spotify are now allowing artists to upload videos to go along with their music on platforms that were once solely audio. The bottom line is this, if an artist is going to be successful in today's music industry, they're going to need some good visuals to go along with their music. And where there's a need, there is a huge opportunity. What's going on guys, my name is Zach Kincaid and today we're going to be going over how you can get into shooting your very first music videos. We're gonna go over the tools you need, how to find an artist willing to work with you if you have no prior experience, and how to do it all on a budget but still get great results. If you're new to the channel, I make videos all about how to be a better creative artist, whether it's through music or video. And if you don't understand why both of those are important in today's society trying to be an artist, you should probably rewatch the intro to this video. But seriously, go ahead and subscribe so you can stay up to date and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. So the tools you need can vary depending on your budget, but the best place to start is probably in your own front pocket. Phone cameras have gotten really, really good. Now they're not perfect by any means and they still have a long way to go before they replace professional cameras and honestly, I really don't think they ever will, but that doesn't mean you can't get great results with your phone. Cole Bennett, the owner of Lyrical Lemonade and probably the king of hip hop music videos right now, shot Lil Yachty's newest video on an iPhone. And if he thinks it's good enough, then you should too. In fact, I'm gonna be shooting a music video solely with an iPhone here in the near future. So if you wanna see that, go ahead and subscribe. Now, if you already have a camera, specifically one that you can put different lenses on, then use that, mainly because you'll learn some important fundamentals. However, if you don't have at least a couple grand to throw at it, I think you'd be better off using what budget you do have for lighting, as this is where you can really upgrade a basic image. I've linked a few of my favorite pieces of lighting gear in the links below if you'd like to check those out for yourself. Hey. Now, finding an artist will look different depending on your situation. If you're someone like me who's also a musician, it's a good chance that you probably have friends who are musicians as well that could use your services. But if that's not the case for you, then there's probably someone you know from your hometown who's trying to be the next SoundCloud superhero that you could possibly shoot one for. And if all else fails, DM an artist you find on Instagram that seems to be just getting their start. Now, the one common theme with all of these methods is that you need to do it for free. I know, I know that's probably the last thing you wanna hear right now, but it's true. If you have no experience, no one is going to want to pay you. They, You don't have any way of proving yourself. I charge some of my commercial clients thousands of dollars per project, but I still shot my first music video for free because even though I had years of experience to bring to the table and tons of gear, I had never proven myself in that specific field. And until you do that, you don't wanna try charging people because they're not gonna wanna do it and then you're just gonna be stuck at square one. So film those first couple of videos for free, build client relationships, and when you do start charging, you can already have a network of people who will wanna come to you for videos and pay you. So you have your camera, you have your artist, now what? Well, the easiest way to film a music video is the run and gun method. Now this style isn't very planned out and you're somewhat limited creatively, but that doesn't mean you can't get great results. Pretty much anyone you can think of who is doing music videos now started with or has at one point shot a run and gun music video just because they are literally free and they're easy to do. This is how most people, myself included, get their start because it's a pretty basic concept, but there are, however, a couple of pointers I'm gonna give you guys so you can go ahead and level up your videos from the get-go. Number one, the most important thing when it comes to shooting a run and gun music video, you have to have energy. The song cannot be a slow song because then there's not really 
much you can do with it. Slow songs, you typically want to have a treatment, but where it's a fast song, running guns do really, really well in the situation because you can do so many quick cuts. It doesn't get boring. You can have camera shake in it if you don't have the best gear and nobody's really looking at the image. They just want to be hyped up by the video. So you want to make sure you're using a song that both you and your artist can feed off the energy of, and it's going to give you a much better running gun product at the end. Number two, find length in your shot. If you're outside, you don't want to have your artist laying up against a wall with you just shooting them straight on and the wall behind them, because that's going to be a very boring shot and it doesn't tell you where they are. You want length and depth in your shot. So you want some things in front, you want some things behind. It's going to make it look like a larger scale production, even though it's not. In this video, I actually use an alleyway outside that gives the image more depth and it also draws you into the artist with what is called leading lines. Number three, change up your focal length. This is the biggest mistake that most people make when it comes to shooting a running gun video. They stick with one focal length and it's typically a wide angle and you're just capturing a lot, but that doesn't it gets boring. You want to have some variety. You want to have some wide shots to establish where you are, but you also want to have some medium shots that kind of show you a little bit more of the artist's personality. And then you always want to have some tight shots that are going to give you a little bit more detail of the scene. Number four, flip the location. You'd be surprised how many different looks you can get in one small space just by pointing your camera at a different angle. So let's say the room you're shooting in is a square. Well, then simply by taking the artist and placing him in the middle, you have eight different angles you can actually shoot at. And there's a good chance that there's gonna be different variations in the wall, in your background, and also bring some props, bring some chairs. There are many different ways where you can make a location look different, even if it's in the same spot, but flip your location. Use every bit of the square that you have. Also, don't be afraid to move your artists around in that same space and get some more angles. There's way more than eight that you can get in one small space. Heck, one of the coolest angles you can actually do is lay on the ground and shoot up at your artists and just have them over you. You get a another angle just like that. And there's a good chance nobody knows what the ceiling looks like. And number five, use your basic tools. Use ND filters, lights, reflectors, gray cards, all of that basic stuff that's pretty cheap, but really helps take your image quality to the next level. I've linked some affordable option for those in the description as well. And that's it. Those are just a few simple steps that you can start your music video journey, start building those client relationships and start boosting your portfolio. But the most important part of all all of this is that you just start. You can't get good at anything without messing it up a couple of times first. There's no way that the first time you shoot a music video, it's going to be perfect. So you have to learn through trial and error. Don't be afraid to mess up. Don't be afraid to lean on other people, lean on the artist for their idea. Just get started, give it your all. And once you go through a couple of videos, you will start to figure out what your style is and the best way to go about achieving that certain look that you love. Anyways, that's going to be it for this one. If you've enjoyed this video go ahead and leave it a like and hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one take care don't let it go. Let it go.